Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, while it is true, He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the question is, is He your King? Is He your Lord? Does he reign and rule over your life and the choices that you make in this life? That's what it means for him to be your king. Well, if you will allow me, I would like to slow things down just a little bit this morning. You see, when I finish a video each day, I'm already pondering, praying over, and considering what the next thing the Lord would have me to talk about would be. Now, when I left yesterday's video, it was on my heart to explain some of the things that I said, because I don't want them to be misconstrued or misunderstood. So I'd like to take a moment and clarify a couple of things I said yesterday, and then I would like to spend a few moments explaining the purpose of this ministry and my heart. Now, yesterday, one of the statements that I made was that man is not good until he has been touched by the Lord. Now, if we were to look at an example in being what is going on in Texas, there are many people helping one another right now. And many of those people, Jesus is not their Lord and he is not their king. But there are still acts of good being portrayed in their lives. And so when someone such as myself makes a statement like there's no good in men without being touched by the Lord, if you would stop and think about that, that really doesn't apply. It, it, there's no truth in it. It doesn't make sense because we see good deeds coming from people who do not know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. We see good coming from these people from time to time. And that shows without further explanation that what I said is not entirely true. So let me explain. We as human beings can be good. We can show acts of compassion without knowing the Lord. But Jesus said, there is no greater love than that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And so even though we can show acts of compassion to others without knowing the Lord, when the decision comes to me or you, mine or yours, without our hearts being regenerated by the presence of the Lord, we will always choose mine over yours. And what Jesus' statement is saying is that we will always put others before ourselves if we've been touched by the hand of the Lord. And so to use our example, what we see going on in Texas right now, there's many acts of compassion. But if many of those people had to choose in saving someone else's daughter or their daughter, they would choose their daughter over their neighbor's daughter. If they had to choose their home or their neighbor's home, they would choose their home first. But if you truly met a spirit-filled, Christ-centered man, he would always choose others over himself. So in short, what I'm saying is that man without God will always choose his own. Man with God will always choose others. And I hope that better helps you to understand. Now, the second thing I'd like to point out, and I'd like to base it off of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be ye renewed by the transforming of your mind. Now, friends, it is my intention to help you walk in a perpetual state of peace and joy that very few know about. And just like the man in the Gospels who told the religious leaders I don't know about all the things you're asking me about. All I know is once I was blind and now I see. As much as I stand on the teaching of scripture, I also rest heavily upon my experiences. And what I mean by that 
is each day as I come to you and I encourage you and strive to motivate you to become a better follower of the Lord Jesus, it isn't my intention to make a personal attack against television, video games, rock and roll, country music, rap music, but my heart is drawn to holiness. My heart is drawn to righteousness. And so I don't abandon these things in my life because they are bad. They automatically begin to fall away because I'm seeking holiness. And holiness is the right way. And it seems that our emphasis is sometimes on what we're forsaking as opposed to what we're pursuing. And what this passage of scripture tells us here is that our minds need to be transformed and renewed by pursuing what is good and acceptable, the perfect will of God. And so for me, in making this a key discipline verse in my life, I can only tell you what has worked for me. You see, I can remember the days where I woke up and I put on the clothes of this world and then I strapped on a cape that said Christianity on the back. And that represented the way that I lived my life. I was more worldly than I was spiritual. But because of the disciplines in my life, now I wake up each morning and I put on the clothes of Christ, of righteousness, and the cape of the world and the flesh is upon my back and I struggle throughout the day to rid myself of it. So my mind is upon the things of God the word of God, the hymns of God, the writings of God, the poems of God, the promises of God. I don't find myself thinking about an old Aerosmith song or humming an old ACDC song or whistling an old country song. I don't find myself being tempted in the way that I used to be tempted. I truly wake up each and every morning feeling a stranger to this world literally homesick for the world to come. And how have I done this? By abandoning the things of this world, not allowing myself to listen to its music, watch its programs, participate in its pleasures. And if it's worked for me, friends, I can only seek to pass it to you. Because if it has worked for me, it will work for you. And if I found a secret, something that many people are missing, why would I not want to pass it on? And so I simply want to urge you today, if you are battling and struggling with the condition and state of your mind, it's simply because garbage in, garbage out. If you want to walk in a way that few have experienced, you have to make this passage, this verse, the rule of your life. And it simply says again, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I can't do it for you. All I can do is lead you to the water. You have to be the one that bends and takes a drink. Well, the last thing I want to mention, friends, before we leave today is that if you truly are hungry for the Word of God, if you are truly seeking truth, one of the biggest struggles for you is going to be before you can fill your mind, you have to empty your mind of many of the misconceptions that are within. And so I want to tell you about something real quick that is truly going to help you in this process. If you will go to a website called grace to You, look it up on Google, When you get there, simply type in questions and answers and watch those videos. Go to YouTube, type in John MacArthur, questions and answers, and watch those videos. There's over a hundred of them. Now, each of them are about an hour long, but basically it's the people of the congregation posing a question to Pastor MacArthur and him taking the time to give a biblical explanation in answering their question. And I'll promise you, this will help you more than anything you could possibly do. And you're going to be shocked and amazed by many of the things that you learned that you thought were right, but from a biblical perspective, you've been wrong all along. 
And don't take that as a negative. It's okay to be wrong as long as you're seeking truth. So again, Grace to You Ministries, Google it, go to YouTube, type in John MacArthur question and answers, and sit back and be blessed. Well, friends, thank you for enduring this heart to heart this morning. A little bit different than what we're accustomed to, but again, thank you, and I pray that it blesses you and truly helps you in your walk with Jesus. Please continue to keep me in your prayers, and I'll do the same for you as well. Now, as the Lord Jesus wills, and until next time, I love you, friends, and I'll see you on the next video.